Hey Matrix, welcome back to the next video in the series where we are going through the November 2020 past paper. If you don't have the paper, then please pause the video. Uh, there's a link in the description where you can download the paper and the men memo. And once you have uh, the paper, then we can continue with question four. Okay, let's get started with question four. It's going to be a bit of a longer one. Um, so, They've given us 4.1, they've given us the following function. Okay, please note that this is a hyperbola um, as we have x at the bottom or in a fraction form. And 4.1.1 uh, says write down the equation of the asymptotes of h. Okay, so we need an x asymptote and a y asymptote. So, first of all, let's note uh, the original form is y equals a over x plus minus p plus minus q, okay, which gives you something like this. Now, what's given is we have negative 3, so our quadrants have swapped, okay, then x minus 1, which means we've moved to the right on my x-axis, okay, because it's a negative, and we've moved two units up on my y-axis, okay. So, my original asymptotes are 0 and 0, but now because there's a shift in the x, my new asymptote for x is going to equal to 1, okay? So it's going to be roughly yeah. And for my y asymptote, I'm going to have y equal to 2. Why? Because the entire graph shifted up by 2 units, okay? Now, the next question is asking us to determine the equation, of the, uh, the equation of the axis of symmetry for h that has a negative gradient. Okay, so we know we're dealing with a negative gradient, so m needs to be negative. Okay, then the line passes through my new asymptotic point, okay, where those two intercept, and that is where x is 1 and y is 2. Okay, so you can use any way of getting this formula. Uh, you can use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 if you want. Or if you look carefully, we can see that the y-intercept will be at plus 2, okay, because it will be the same for this graph. And we can see that x is x minus 1 we can take from here. Okay, so we have the following. We are going to have x equal to x minus p. In this case, it's equal to x minus 1. Okay. And what we're going to have is c is going to equal to plus 2. Okay. Now we can substitute this into our formula. So we'll have y equals to negative gradient. Okay. Um, x minus 1 plus 2. Okay, so if we substitute everything in, we're going to have y equals to negative x plus 1 plus 2, so y equals to negative x plus 3. Okay, the other way you can work it out is if you uh, look at the gradient passing through the point here, it's going to make a 45 angle and so on, so you there are multiple ways of doing this. Okay, the next question is question 4.1.3, which says sketch the graph of H showing the asymptotes and interception with the axis. Okay, so the minute we have to show interception, we have to find where y equals to 0 and where x equals to 0. So let's do x equal to 0 first, since it's the simplest one. So we'll have y equal to negative uh, 3 over 0 minus 1 plus 2. And if you work that out, negative, negative, that's positive. So y is going to equal to 5. Okay. So that's, we can say, let's say 5 is there. Now if you did y equal to 0, then we can solve for x. Um, so 0 equals to negative 3 over x minus 1 plus 2. Okay. Take the 2 over, multiply the x minus 1 across. And you can sort out the algebra and you'll get down to x equals to 5 over 2. Okay, so that's going to be, let's say, over here. So 5 over 2. Okay, 
Then we have to do our asymptotes. So um, our asymptotes we said was add x equals to 1, okay, and y equal to 2. Okay, so that's let's say is roughly here for y equal to 2. And x equals to 1 is less than 5 over 2, so I'm going to draw it roughly here. Okay, and remember it's negative 3, so we're in the um, second and fourth quadrant. So our graph is going to look something like this. And it's going to come up over here. Okay, obviously it's not drawn perfectly to scale, but we've indicated everything that they want. So that's 2 and that is 1. Okay, now let's have a look at 4.2. So 4.2 gives us another graph. Okay, at first sight we can see we're dealing with a, a parabola. It's a uh, smiley face parabola. So we have a positive um, constant in the front. Uh, we can see it shifted off the axes, and we have a straight line running over here, g of x. Okay, so 4.2.1 says write down the coordinates of a. Okay, so note that a is my turning point, as also stated at the top here. Okay, now there are three ways of finding turning point. You can use the formula, negative b over 2a. You can use um, the axis of symmetry or you can use your uh, calculus where we have the gradient equal to zero. But there's an easier way of doing this one. If we look at f of x, which was given to us, okay, the original form of my parabola is x squared plus c. Okay, that's a basic parabola where we're sitting at zero. Okay, but now if we look, we've substituted x plus five into x's place. So we've shifted my graph to the left by 5 units. Now I'm sitting over here at negative 5. Okay, Plus, we've shifted the graph down by 8 units. So this over here is now negative 8. So I'm at negative 5 and negative 8. Okay. Originally, I was sitting at 0, 0. So my new turning point becomes negative 5 and negative 8. Okay, so just some basics from... Uh, grade 10 and 11 that we have to incorporate and it's worth two marks. Okay, so not too many calculations Then 4.2.2 says write down the range of f Okay Now remember the range of f always deals with y values. Okay uh, So think about a shooting range. We're standing on the x. We're looking down y Okay um, Next, so to find out what the range is, we'll find the lowest value on our graph. So we said that this was negative 5, negative 8. Okay, so this here is negative 8. So can you see that all the values are valid from negative 8 to infinity? Okay, so you can write it in any way you want, but I prefer writing it y must be greater or equal to negative 8, or you can say that y is an element including negative 8 to infinity. Okay, we never include infinity. Okay, next we're looking at 4.2.3, which says calculate the values of m and n. Now, m and n are on at point D. Okay, so now note that because of this line that links A and D, okay, it's um, perpendicular to my x-axis, D and A will share the same X value. Okay, so we can see already that M equals negative 5. Okay, so M equals negative 5. I've stated here, note that A and D share or oh, have the same X point and D lies on G. Okay, so now let's find the missing Y value. All we have to do is substitute my X point into the function G of X since N and M sit on the line g and we'll find our endpoint okay so we're looking for g of negative 5 which is going to equal to a half negative 5 plus 9 over 2 okay and if you sort out your algebra you should get to a value of uh, 2 
Okay, so don't forget to write the coordinate again. So therefore, D is going to be negative 5 and 2. Okay, now let's have a look at 4.2.4. Okay, once again, don't forget to fill in your values that you found. So D, I'm just going to write up here. We found that to be negative 5 and 2. Okay. So 4.2.4 says calculate the area of OCDE. Okay, so OCDE. So we have a trapezium sitting over here, but now it's lying on its side. Okay, so I'm just going to draw it upright. So it's going to be look something like this. Okay, so that is E, that is D, um, this one is O, and that is C. Okay, so here is my perpendicular. Now remember the formula of a trapezium, okay, for the area is half my perpendicular height multiplied by A plus B, okay, where A and B is the top and the bottom, okay. So in this case, A is going to equal to ED, okay. Um, B is then going to equal to OC, and my perpendicular height is going to equal to OE. Okay, so now I can substitute this into the formula, which will then be area of trapezium equals to a half my height, so that's OE times A is ED uh, plus B, which is OC. Okay, so now finding those values which we have, we know that um, OE is um, negative 5, okay, but remember we're taking the uh, absolute value of these, so it's just 5 units, okay, so we'll have a half, uh, OE is 5, um, ED, ED is this little piece up here, okay, we know that that is 2, plus OC, okay, so OC, this point over here, is the y-intercept of g, which we can see is 9 over 2. So 9 over 2, and if you sort out those numbers, you will get down to an answer of 65 over 4 units. Okay, but remember it's area, so it must be squared. Okay, almost done. 4.2.5 says determine the equation of g to the power of negative 1, so the inverse of g, okay, um, in, the ter in the form of y equals something, okay. So now when we find inverse, we let x equal to y and y equal to x, and then solve for y. So what does this mean? Okay, so what was given is y equals to a half x plus 9 over 2. So now I'm going to let x equal y and y equals x. So... I'm going to have x equals to a half y plus 9 over 2. Okay, so now we can solve for y, so that becomes x minus 9 over 2 equals to a half y. So y is going to equal to 2x minus 9. Okay, and that becomes g negative 1 of x. Okay, not too difficult. Okay, looking at uh, 4.2.6, uh, it says that we have h of x, which equals to g, the inverse of g plus k is a tangent of f of x. Okay, determine the coordinates uh, points of contact between h and f. Okay, so h of x is given by that. Okay, so I've substituted my inverse in, which gives me this formula here. So what it's saying is, here's f of x. Okay, now at some point, I'm going to say this point here, I have a tangent line. Okay, so we've now learned that, that in calculus, um, the tangent can be found using our derivative of the function given. So uh, f of x, we can find the derivative, and then at that point, we can use that to find our tangent line. Okay, so what it says is, f prime of x is equal to my gradient of my tangent line. Okay, so that's m for tangent. Okay, so let's find the derivative of f of x. So f of x 
is given as a half x plus 5 squared minus 8. So if we sort out the bracket, we're then going to get a half um, x squared plus 10x uh, plus 25 minus 8. So if we distribute the half in and then minus the 8 off of it, we're going to end up with x squared over 2 uh, plus 5x uh, plus 4.5. Okay, this makes sense because remember, g of x, we said that it intercepts at 9 over 2, which is 4.5. Okay, now that we have that, we can find f prime of x. That's going to be, remember, we take the 2 down, so 2 times, or 2 over 2 is 1, so we're just going to have x. Okay, and then the derivative of 5x is just going to be plus 5. Okay, now we said that the derivative of x equals the gradient of my tangent line. So note that the gradient of my tangent line is 2. Okay, so yeah, m equals 2. So now I can set these two equal to each other. So I'm going to have x plus 5 is equal to 2. Okay, so therefore I'm going to have x equal to 2 minus 5, that's negative 3. Now I can use this, substitute it back into my original formula up top here, and I can get my y value. So let's use y equals 2, uh, negative 3 squared is 9 over 2, uh, plus 5 times negative 3 is going to be negative 15, plus um, 4.5. Okay. So if we sort out all our numbers, let's get a calculator. So we're going to have 4.5 plus 4.5, that's 9 uh, minus 15, okay, and y will equal to negative 6. Okay, so the point of intersection is then going to be negative 3 and negative 6. Okay, and that's how we do the question. Okay, if you found today's video helpful, then please leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, this question, then please leave them in the comment section below. I'll get back to them as soon as possible. And thank you for watching.